With more on this, we're joined now by Faisal Alazam with the organization Canadians for Democracy in Syria. Mr. Alazam, we've been watching what's been going on in this country for months now. The protesters have not quit. Assad has not quit. How do you see this ending? Well, it's going to end with a democratic Syria and an end of a 40-year oppression and inheritance uh, presidency. And uh, we're actually betting on uh, nationalist figures from the army and the government to join the revolution and uh, stop the violence from the regime against uh, peaceful protesters. Uh, the regime can't get away anymore with the violence. In the 1980s, we've had tens of thousands that were killed in protests, specifically in the city of Hama. But during that time, there was no Facebook, there was no YouTube, there was no Twitter. So the world could not see. But right now, we have no excuse. Everyone is seeing the crimes against humanity that are occurring in Syria. And we all have a moral obligation to stand with the Syrian people with their struggle for, uh, for freedom. Well, sir, we, are, we have lots of ways of getting information out of Syria, but very few ways of getting official information. Reporters are not allowed in. Reporters are not allowed to report. So it's all unofficial stories we're hearing. I suspect you have much more sources of information than we do. What is your sense of whether or not this revolution has yet reached a tipping point where, where the protesters will, will win and Assad will lose? Well, if you look at a city like Hamas, uh, the protests are extremely intense, and uh, it's not just in the city of Hamas, it's all over Syria right now. And you have to understand that each time someone protests or calls for freedom in Syria, he's being met with tanks, he's being met with snipers, with uh, militia thugs, criminals, rapists. Those are the kind of people that are going against protesters, and despite uh, the attempts of the regime to, to brutalize the protesters, they are still showing bravery and they are still out there. So it's, it's remarkable and it's re they, will not, they are not able to break the will of the people. In fact, the city of Hamas specifically has been declared a disaster area because the regime has used everything to, to break the brave people uh, in Hamas and break their will. They have used Katyusha missiles, warplanes, and even heavy artillery. Bodies are scattered. Those are the reports that we're getting. Bodies are scattered on the streets of Hamas. Families are afraid to bury their dead because the city is bombarded and, they are, and snipers are all over the roofs. We've seen videos of people trying to get a body on the street and getting shot down. You must be encouraged when Syria and Assad's regime is being censored by uh, neighbors, including Turkey, a big player in the region. Uh, Syria is suspended by the Arab League. There are reports of many, many military defectors going over to the other side. Still, Assad does not quit. So you are asking the international community to do more? Exactly. Right now, what we need from the international community is to send international observers. This is very crucial. And those international observers have to be objective, and we want them to report to the United Nations Security Council and to report to the international um, community. So their goal is to protect these protesters. Whenever there is tanks, whenever there is snipers, and whenever the military thugs are there, we want these international bodies to, to see that and to report. And we want them as well to protect our detainees. We all know whoever goes in these protests calling for freedom, what happens to him. And when, when he's detained, an example I can give you is a friend, a good friend that we have in Montreal, who was friends with us in uh, our organization in Montreal called Riaz Matar. We used to call him Little Randy because he used to distribute flowers and bottles of water to uh, to, to the to the to the militias in uh, in the suburbs of Damascus. And what happened to him? He was tortured to death, returned to his family in a box with his throat removed and his organs stolen. So those are the people that we are dealing with in Syria. And uh, we really need those international observers to be there and to, and to protect the Syrian people. And we need them as well to allow humanitarian aid to get into certain cities, specifically the city of Hamas. There, this city is currently under siege. It has been called a disaster area. Electricity is cut off in the city of Hamas, and they are cutting off food and medical supplies as well to break the people's will and because this city has been crying uh, for freedom. Faisal Alazam is with Canadians for Democracy in Syria. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Thank you for having me.